Hello, my name's Tom and I've been messing about in Reaper and having a go at creating some Jesus Sonic or JSFX plugins. Um, I've largely just been copying what other people have done in the code and then making a few adjustments and then trying to add uh, nicer looking interfaces to some of the stock ones. So, um, for example, one of the ones I've done here is just uh, this one here. It's just a fairly simple generic delay, um, which is based off an example I'll, I'll show you in a second. But actually, I'll, I'll just show you now. So I got this one from basic delay plugin example from Salty here, and it's just on the um, Cocos forum. Um, so I'll include a link to this so you can see that. So I based it on the code in there to start with. And then what I did, because this is just, this would just come up with like a, you know, sort of looking something like this, is I um, used Geraint Luff's GUI. So I included that as an include file and then tried to link that up. And so you can see you've got some nicer sliders and dials and buttons. And you can do some other stuff as well, like option boxes as well, and just generally make it look nicer. So, um, yeah, I included those. And then I included an option so you could change the GUI style. So you can switch between different GUI styles. And then you can just do on off on the buttons as well. So that's the first thing I tried. And then um, one of the, um, there's a, another plugin, which is the Ossifier Chorus here which I did actually demo um, in my video I did um, called uh, uh, Best 5, what I called it? Um, I called it the Top 5 Free JSFX Jesus Sonic Plugins. And that I, I show some of the best ones which you can download. I show how to do it because most of those aren't actually included within Reaper. You have to add them themselves. And I gave a bit of a guide about how they're working underneath. So if you haven't watched that, that would be the best thing to watch. Uh, also, if you don't really know much about automation or that kind of thing, probably have a look at that video. It's only a couple of minutes long. And then, um, yeah, this one here as well um, shows um, some other tricks and things you can do. So that would, before you actually start doing any coding, it, it would be a good idea to have a look at those. Um, so where did I get to? Yeah, so I did a, so this next one here, I basically ripped off the code from here, off the Ossifier chorus here. And then I used Geraint Luff's um, GUI and tried to connect it all up to that. And um, yeah, and eventually it worked. It's a little bit of a faff to get it all to work and to get it to lay out. I could get it to work okay, all right, but it just went wonky. Um, so that's as far as I've got so far. So what I would recommend if you want to look into yourself, it's probably the best place to start would be, um, there's another poster, on, but it's on the, it's on the Cocos Wiki first ever Jesus Sonic tutorial. And this goes through from um, very simple ones and just gives you an idea of how you could start doing it. So for example, the most simple one you could get is a mute one. So it's only four lines. So you've just got a description at the top. You have to say sample before you actually do anything at sample. And then it would be sample zero it would be the left hand side of what you're hearing at the speaker. Sample one would be the right hand side and it's just setting it to zero. So as soon as you turn that on, it just turns it off. That's it. Um, so another one, which I started having a look about and just playing about with and changing, is an echo one. So basically what you, happens with this is you just um, create an, uh, a memory buffer or basically a location in memory. Then you increment it by a certain amount of time and put a copy of what's the input is into it. And then at the end, you just add it on to the end. So you put the original input of what you've been playing, then and then a copy of that slightly later again to do an echo. And in this one, it's it's changing it. So you do the left hand side and then you're, you're making it 
the same, the right hand side the same so that they match up. Um, but then when I started playing with that, I started thinking, well, they don't necessarily need to match up. So then I added in an extra amount of multiplication of delay. And so I made it different out the right speaker to the left speaker. And then you could sort of do one in the middle, which would be a combination. So you get a kind of circular delay. And then down here as well, it also shows um, pitch shifting. So I thought, well, next stage you could do is you could start um, changing the pitch slightly on each repeat of the echo. So, and then you could add in controls to say how much you change the pitch each time, and how many echoes you did. So as soon as you start thinking about it, you start coming up with ideas and thinking of things you could do. Um, so um, the best thing to do is to really um, just open up some of the ones you've got. So I'll just open up. So if you say, look, add for, look for delays. Oops, if I type delay, right? And it's, I'll put this under the JS for delays. And you'll see that these ones, the with one, they're all basically the same structure and the same look for the delay, but it just, does slightly different things as well with it, whether it's reversing it, whether it's a stereo bounce sustain. So if you look through those, you can just see what the difference is on those and see what it's doing. And then another thing you could try doing is you could try combining those together. So you could have a delay pedal with one, and then you could use maybe some of uh, Geraint Love's GUI things to um, switch between them and do different combinations of both of them and combine them together, and then just chop out any bits you don't want. So this is the way to start, is to just start messing about with them, start commenting out bits to see what they do and see how it breaks it, um, start doing different combinations and playing with it and just seeing what happens. Um, okay, so um, all these examples we've done so far, I've just been using EL2, which is the same language which uh, Reaper or Cocos used for all, for all the scripting, for all the scripts you get. Um, but you can also use Lua, which is a bit more powerful language and you've got better debugging in it and it does look a bit more useful. I haven't tried it yet, but there's a tutorial by Admiral Bumblebee, um, which, which is definitely worth having a look at. And then also I found with the Geraint Luff ones, it was a bit of a faff to get it all working. It wasn't entirely clear, but so you might want to try using Locasana ones here. So these ones only work with Lua. So this would be something else you could try um, if you wanted to have a go at it. Um, I suppose the next stage after doing that, if you wanted to do proper commercial plugins or get into it seriously, you'd probably want to start using C++ and um, Juice framework. So you can get um, and all the stuff you need for free, but you can basically um, download and have a go. And there's a lot more tutorials on that. I haven't tried it yet, but I had a look through them and there's a lot of, lot more guidance, a lot more books. So it might seem more intimidating to start with, but it might actually be easier in the long term. I'm not sure. Um, so, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a very simple example, just to give you an idea and just to show how you start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the volume one. So I'm basically just going to copy this code here. It's like a very simple one. So to do a new one, you just right click to create new JS effects. And I'll just call this TC basic volume and then this will create a new one. So you've got it here and it's just, um, yeah, about as simple as you can get it. It will set up a basic template for you when you just do new. So then click on edit and now I'm going to copy and paste in the volume. 
Okay, now I'll just do S, Control S, and it will save it. And then you should see that this is the basic volume on it. Yep, there you go. So that's all it is. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to put a button in and change it to a button instead. So I'll show you what I could. So what you need to do is you need to import the library, the drains love one, and then you initialize it. This is just setting up a memory and it's setting it all up to use this. This is a function which you can get, which sets up the labels. Um, you can type these in yourself. You don't want to type these in here. You can just go into Atlantis Reverb and or any of his plugins there which are using it and you can just literally just find the bit where it says labels copy and paste it out and bring it in but i'll just do it all in one go from here for the moment and then you have to do at gfx which refers to his library and starts it up and then on here it sets up the this is just the bar across the top which looks a little nicer and then for uis you're just allocating a location setting a control group putting some space for it, sending to the, to the labels function, the name, the value. So this links it up and shows it behind. And then you're setting up your automation on that. So all the code, all the difficult bit is in the include file here. So you don't really need to worry about that. You just need to know but until it doesn't work. You just need to bring it in. So it should be all you need to do it, but there was a problem with it. So just control V to paste it in. So one other problem I did have when I first did it is that the at slider bit should be all you need to get everything to hook up and get them working together and if you move the volume knob up and down it does move the slider which you're using um so um what we had to do to fix it is to just repeat the same thing under block so that seemed to fix a number of problems which came up in the forums if you just repeat it in different things it just Otherwise, it didn't seem to talk to each other properly. Um, something else which I did do as well is on the actual slider name is what it can be. It can be generally a better idea to give it a, a real name to say what it is. Otherwise, when it gets bigger, then it can get a bit confusing if it's just slider one, slider two. So volume DB. And then I just need to remember to change it under here as well. So again, control S, see how far that's got. Okay, so that seems to do it. See if it goes up and down. Yep, so you can see it's moving the slider up and down and it's working. So this is what's really controlling it under the surface, but it's connecting to that, that's working. But we don't want to see that. So the final step is under volume so that it's still there but you're not seeing it. All you do is so minus, again, control S, and hopefully that's disappeared. Yep, so there you go. So hopefully that's given you um, something you can start on. You can get an idea of what's possible. You can play about with different Jesus Sonic effects and get an idea of what's going under the surface. Um, I can do some more on this if it's something people are interested in. So if people want to see more, if they subscribe and click like, I'll bother to do some more. So, OK, so thanks for watching and maybe have a look at some of my other videos as well. Cheers. Bye.